I scare ya? It's that time of year again. October 31st. Halloween. Just this entire month, in fact. Just, you know, horror films, horror stories, horror this, horror that. Big scares. But have you ever asked yourself, why? What makes all of these things scary? Well, there are many reasons why, but I'm a musician, so obviously we're gonna focus on the music. <laughs> what makes scary music so scary? But before we go into that, I'm gonna go on a tangent. A whole lot of fall anime... <clears throat> A lot of long anticipated animes dropped this month and I am so excited to be an anime fan. Bleach is finally back after 8 years. Chainsaw Man is finally airing. Spy X Family Part 2 is also here. And the one I really want to pay attention to today is Boku no Hero Academia's 6th season that finally came out. I'm sure I probably already spoiled it in the title, but this is the anime that is the inspiration for this video. I absolutely love the series, I love the music, and it's just overall a really great watch. I'm sure all the BNHA haters are gonna disagree with me. Don't come at me. <laughs> What actually sparked this video idea was, so I was sending music to a friend of mine and I wanted to show them some anime soundtracks that I really liked. And because I knew all of this really cool anime was coming up, I did something really weird and I went back and listened to all the old OSTs from previous seasons. I mean, I would think the logical thing to do is to go watch the episodes, but I prefer the nostalgia factor of listening to the music. Just, <laughs> I digress. <laughs> I think what the creators of the anime and the composers behind the anime do very well is they introduce a massive contrast between the heroes and the villains. I mean, let's be real here, there are some very terrifying characters in this anime, like Shigaraki Tomura, anime plague doctor, uh, creepy anime schoolgirl, and giant stony hulk, Kage Bunshin no Jutsu, Darth Vader. Alright, I'm kidding, I know their names, I'm just trying to... I'm just trying to humor you guys. Just leave me alone. <laughs> I would be terrified if these characters existed in real life. But what's more terrifying than the character design and the bare backstories is the music that's accompanying these terrifying characters. I strongly encourage you guys to go listen to the OST albums of the anime. Like, unbelievable compositional work. Once you get to those sound chilling, creepy, eerie, scary, soundtracks. It's just a complete 180 flip from what the anime is portrayed as. And that's the power of what a good composer and sound designer can do. There's one track on the album that I want to focus on exclusively today, and it's in Japanese. Um, hold on. <laughs> Sure. <laughs> Which roughly translates to... Scary to listen to in the middle of the night. For copyright reasons, I won't play you the track on this video. I'll link it down in the description. Go support these composers and creators. It's just... There's so much stuff out there. <laughs> okay, back on track. Let's talk about why scary music is so scary. This is gonna be kind of a long video, you know? So I could very easily tell you right now, like, major is happy and minor is sad. But let's think a little bit deeper. Let's talk about dissonance. What is dissonance? Well, in order to talk about dissonance, we need to talk about its counterpart, consonance. A lot of the music we listen to are structured around consonant sounds. These could include perfect intervals, triads, octaves, pleasant sounding stuff. Dissonance, on the other hand, are the more crunchy and gut-wrenching sounds that you'll hear in music. These may include augmented intervals, diminished intervals, minor seconds, major sevenths, and there's one more kind of dissonance, but we're gonna leave that for a little bit later. So what makes something consonant and what makes something dissonant? In order to talk about this, I need to briefly cover the harmonic series. I think the simplest way I can explain the harmonic series are the harmonic series is a series of pitches that naturally occur in nature, and you can kind of think of them as resonance. Every instrument has their own set of resonances, but the harmonics it produces and the overtones it produces gives it its character. I'll link you to a video that will explain it better. 
perfect video. <laughs> but anyway, with consonant sounds, the harmonics and the overtones are amplified because the overtones of the notes that are being played will line up. Whereas for dissonance, some harmonics may line up, but the majority of the harmonics that are being produced don't line up and clash. Let me show you what that looks like. I have a piano loaded up here and I also have a spectrogram. I'm gonna play you middle C on the piano and I'm gonna show you what middle C looks like in the spectrogram. So if we look here, this first peak is the fundamental frequency, which is middle C, and all of these other notches that are peaking above are part of the harmonic series. Alright, so now let me play you a consonant sound. I'll play you a perfect fifth, a C and a G. As you can see, we introduced a new fundamental and a lot more harmonics. But did you notice how some of the new harmonics introduced lined up with some of the harmonics that were produced by the C. This is why it sounds consonant, because some of the harmonics and overtones will line up together. Let's do the same thing. I'm going to play you a C, and now I'll play you a minor second. Notice how there are more notches than there were with the consonant interval. This shows you that the harmonics don't line up well, and this is the kind of sound that makes you cringe or feel unnerved. It doesn't sound pure. So to summarize, consonants, harmonics line up, sounds good. Dissonance, harmonics don't line up, sounds bad. Okay, not really bad, but like uncomfortable. Dissonant intervals can sound good, but you would have to put them into context. But we're not here to talk about that. We're here to talk about horror. Big scares. Now I did say there was one kind of dissonance that I wanted to exclusively talk about, and that's a tritone. Even if you don't know what a tritone is, I'm Pretty sure you've heard of one before. In music terms, a tritone is a diminished fifth or an augmented fourth. In regular terms, it sounds really bad. Okay, I'm just kidding. <laughs> so in our equal temperament tuning system, there are 12 semitones in an octave, and a tritone is exactly six semitones above the root note. One, two, three, four, five, six. Now the tritone has a bit of history behind it. Okay, maybe not a bit, maybe a lot of history behind it. Going all the way back to the Renaissance, a lot of the music that was being made was usually made for church, and in church you would worship God, and so they would use a lot more consonant sounds to emulate, emanate, emulate, emanate. They would use a lot more consonant sounds to emanate purity, so they would focus on using thirds and fifths. Now the tritone had a different name back in the day. Back in the days, like I lived in the renaissance. <laughs> they called this the devil's tone. Music was meant to be beautiful and was meant to express God. So then when they discovered this interval, it became known as the devil's interval. And it was strongly avoided in all kinds of music until music became secular. Or more for the common people. Music outside of church. The tritone used in the correct context can induce tension and anxiety. It's an interval that feels unresolved, so it leaves you in anticipation for what's coming next. All good qualities for big scares. Even while we're talking about harmony, we can also go to the other side of the spectrum and say that the lack of harmony is also terrifying. Harmony gives structure and context. Particularly in the track that I selected today, you'll notice that there really isn't a tonal center. You could argue that there is one. There are a lot of different factors involved and it makes it more difficult to latch onto a tonal center or home base. So let's talk about them. I think there are three things that are happening in this track that amplify that eerie quality without actually giving you harmony. Polytonality, pitch bending, and drones. These are not the drones you're looking for. That's not the quote. How do I explain polytonality? Well, poly means many. Tonality? Tonality. <laughs> many tonalities. <laughs> okay, let me simplify that for you. <laughs> Let me just show you an example. Here is a C major scale. C major is one tonality. Now if we were to play a completely unrelated scale on top of this one, let's take E flat minor for example. Sounds perfectly fine, right? If we were to play both of these two together, let's see what happens. The first couple notes were okay, but did you hear all of the dissonances that happened? This is polytonality. 
You could notice how some of the intervals in the scale sounded okay, but once you got to the crunchy bits, maybe you felt a little more uncomfortable. I think Hayashi makes great use of polytonality by throwing the listener off away from a tonal center, where we can't exactly pinpoint a scale or like a certain tonal center. And that makes us uncomfortable because people like order instead of chaos. Another thing that really helps deviate away from tonal centers is pitch bending, or as a string player, glissandos. I'm sure we've all heard orchestral glissandos. Isn't that beautiful? But why? Why does that make us uncomfortable? If you were listening closely, not every single instrument was playing from the same pitch. So even though all of them were all heading up in the same direction, they were headed up from a different starting point. And to go one step further, some of those instruments were moving up at different speeds. So again, back to my idea of dissonance. This creates tension and dissonance. Not only do we not know where we're headed, we don't even know where we started. So under that pretense, harmonically, you're suspended in the middle of nowhere. And that's terrifying. <laughs> this really is gonna be a long video, huh? Alright, enough about that. Let's move on. <laughs> We've been talking about pitches and sounds for so long, but what's scarier than all of this is... Silence. Sometimes the things we fear most are the fear is... Sometimes the things we fear most are the fear is... Sometimes the things we fear most is the fear of the unknown. And silence does a good job of that, because what's there to know if you're not given any information? Need I say any more? <laughs> but you know what's cooler than silence are sounds we can't hear. Human hearing can range from 20 hertz to 20 kilohertz. Depending on your age and how well you take care of your ears, it should fall somewhere in between this range. However, there are frequencies that exist beyond 20 kHz and beyond 20 Hz. The sounds that exist below 20 Hz are called infrasound. Even before we talk about infrasound, let's talk about sub-bass. Sub-bass is already really close to that range of infrasound. In music terms, sub-bass ranges from 20 Hz to anywhere around 100 hertz. And if you've ever gone to like a big concert or at a big movie theater with big speakers, you've probably experienced a low rumbling feeling or you could feel your body tremble. This phenomena occurs because the speed of those waves are so incredibly slow that they resonate with your body and your body will shake along with the speed of those waves. So if that's the case with sub bass, What's infrasound? The main difference between these two is you can hear a sub bass, but infrasound goes beyond human hearing. And they exist in nature. Things like avalanches, earthquakes, volcanoes, tidal waves, these can all generate infrasound. So you must be asking me, how is this even scary? We can't even hear it. Well, let me tell you. That's also very scary. In 2002, the release of the movie Irreversible caused a lot of controversy. A lot of moviegoers ended up leaving early and throwing up outside of the cinema. The cause of this phenomenon wasn't known for a while, until the director of the film came out and announced that he was using a 27 hertz frequency throughout the first 30 minutes of the movie. 30 minutes! People in the theater were basically sitting through 30 minutes of an earthquake, panic-induced, anxiety-ridden. These viewers were basically sent into shock because they were visually stimulated and orally stimulated. Think about it next time you go watch a horror movie in the, in the, in the theater. So think about that next time you go watch a horror movie in the theater. Did you guys see that? Um, I call this next section fear by just juxtaposition. <laughs> I think I'm more scared of the fact that I can't say some of these words. Fear by juxtaposition. There we go. I call this next section fear by juxtaposition because contrast is a very powerful tool that can induce Confusion. This is a really weird example, but to whoever introduced children into horror films, you guys are just a bunch of sick f anyways. It's the counterbalance of the two that makes you unsure how you should feel. 
For example, if, if you heard a children's song playing in a dark alley, or if you were at someone's birthday party and you heard a kid screaming, these situations put your brain into a kind of shock. All of the sounds are familiar to you, but the context in which it's played makes it spine chilling. You're not expecting to hear children singing in a dark alley, and I sure hope you're not expecting a child's shrilled scream at a birthday party. Let me try to recreate an example for you. Yeah, let's just listen to some music. It's all right. Uh, let me see what I can do. Here, let me set the scene for you. It's October. You're sitting in your living room. It's getting kind of chilly outside. You decide to sit next to your fireplace. You decide to use your old vinyl player and put on some music. And... Scene. <laughs> Did I make you guys jump? The fact that you're in your living room alone, you're not expecting some kid to scream. So by having that while you're listening to some smooth jazz, it's shocking. I won't try to recreate this example, but in the track that I'm talking about, Hayashi has kids singing Ring Around the Rosy over this washed, eerie soundscape. And if that doesn't send chills down your spine, You've got like guts of steel, I don't know. Other ways you can use contrast to induce fear and anxiety. Things like a <laughs> things like a ticking clock or like a leaky faucet. Something that recurs in consistent intervals of time. These can induce anxiety. The persistence of a sound can cause anxiety. But what makes this effect more powerful in the track is when Hayashi takes away the sound of the clock. If you just listen to the first few seconds of the track, if you even want to put a time signature on it and call it say we're in 4-4. He has the clock ticking for six beats and takes it away for two. The absence of the clock is more powerful than the clock itself. It would kind of be like if someone was knocking at your door and then you open the door and nobody's there. The absence of presence can be a powerful thing. Other anxiety inducing sounds like sirens and screaming and like very intimate breathing. <sighs> Okay, I'm, <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> I had to. I mean, you gotta experience it to feel uncomfortable. I'm sure the face I made was very spot on too. <laughs> Oh god. It's because we're not always expecting these sounds to occur that gives us a sense of anxiety and fear. Like if we had a friend in a room and they suddenly started breathing in our ear, Maybe that would scare you a little, but at least you would know it's your friend doing it. However, if you were in a room all by yourself and you started hearing someone breathing very close to your ear, that's a different story. And this leads me right into my final point. Similar to how I was saying fear of the unknown when I was talking about silence, the unfamiliarity of something that sounds familiar to you is just as powerful. Things like garbled speech and distorted sounds, you kind of know what they are, but they aren't clear enough to you to make any sense of it. A game that does this very well is actually the Five Nights at Freddy's series. YouTuber Scruffy goes in depth on how the sound design of Five Nights at Freddy's induces fear and anxiety. I'll link that over here. I'll save myself the trouble of trying to explain it for you guys. But throughout the entire track, there are so many vocal elements, some of which are identifiable, like a distant choir or the children singing, but then there are other vocal elements that are more distorted, more distant. It's just so much harder to feel a sense of comfort because you don't know if it's a real person's voice or if it's something completely inhuman. I just want to take the last part of this video and see if I can recreate some of those things, partially as practice on my part. I want you guys to understand that the things that we deem scary in horror movies and even in life, the things we find terrifying are sitting in the boundaries between the familiar and the unfamiliar. So let's make Make a bunch of creepy sounds, why don't we? So in the track there are a lot of like vocal one-shots that occur, all hovering above this creepy tritone drone that's occurring. I want to see if I can recreate some of those effects, but knowing how stupid I am, I want to make this funny for you guys too. So let's look up some of the- <laughs> some really stupid words. <laughs> World's dumbest words. 34 of the craziest English words, alright. Bumfuzzle? Cattywampus? Snickersnee? <laughs> These <laughs> these words are so dumb. I'm gonna go with snickersnee. It's got a lot more S's. Okay, <laughs> let's see. <laughs> oh, I'm such an idiot for this. I can't. <laughs> I'm just gonna record myself a couple saying this a couple times. Snickersnee. Snickersnee.
Snickers knee. Snickers knee. Snickers knee. Snickers knee. <laughs> I'm such an idiot. <laughs> okay, that really deep one's kind of dumb. Snickers knee. I like the breathiness of that one. I'm gonna take that one. I don't want to waste too much time on vocal edits. Um, I think I'm just gonna do it all here. Normally, I'd remove the, the room sound, mostly because there's so much going on, but I'll, I'll save you all the trouble. <laughs> Maybe slap a delay on it. Snickers. Gonna throw a huge reverb on it. Snickers. I kind of want to throw a reverse on there too. I'm gonna have different reverb times on this one, or delay times. And then maybe if I put an echo on it. Let's see what it sounds like. <laughs> it just sounds like I'm saying Snickers, which is kind of what I'm saying. Bigger reverb. I need more. This sounds better. Eerie, right? I mean... <laughs> let's do some garbled speech. I guess in the spirit of Halloween, let's read some Edgar Allan Poe. A dream within a dream. Alright, I'll read the first stanza, I guess. Narration! <laughs> Take this kiss upon the brow, and in parting from you now, thus much let me avow. You are not wrong, who deem that my days have been a dream. Yet, if hope has flown away, in a night or in a day, in a vision or in none, is it therefore the less gone? All that we see or seem is but a dream within a dream. I'm 14 and that's deep. <laughs> oh, I wasn't even recording it in Ableton. <laughs> oh. Okay, this time we got it. I guess the first thing we can do is speed this up. That's already pretty distorted. <laughs> Maybe we reverse it. Maybe not for the sped up one. I think I want to reverse the original. <laughs> okay, I want to form and shift this, so I'm going to throw on some little altar boy. Oh, that's freaky. <laughs> Maybe if I do half and half, I'll do like a parallel, parallel processing. <laughs> Holy crap. <laughs> yeah, I duplicated Little Alter Boy and instead I used a different mode. I used the robot mode to see if I can introduce some metallic artifacts. <laughs> Wait, I want to speed this clip up. This is, <laughs> this is fun. <laughs> Actually, let's introduce some more distortion. And let me throw a limiter on there so I don't kill my kill my speakers. You know what I want? I want to automate the pitch. 
Wait, okay, listen to this. Let me put some music behind it. <laughs> Not music, let me put some ambience behind it. Where is my contact library? There is my contact library. Uh, marimba. No, I want soft clock. No, maybe I do want the marimba. Hang on. I want a marimba with a huge reverb. Maybe with less attack. I need compression. This reverb is too long. I have no lighting. Been recording for so long, even the sun's going down. Alright, check this out. I mean, <laughs> it's not great, but I was more focused on this speech. And there was one more thing I wanted to try. Um, in the track, there's a child singing on La. And after its first introduction, Hayashi introduces more layers where the child's voice becomes more distorted and more mangled, layered below the original. So I wanted to see if I could recreate that. Yeah, I like that melody. Let's take that one. The thumbnail for some of these videos that I took for this from are just absolutely terrifying. I can't handle horror. And yet I'm doing this video. <laughs> so let's see, we have the original. Let's see how much we can mangle of this. It's a good place to start, try tone apart. Bit of distortion. Yeah, I'll just do an octave up on this one and maybe maybe a little quieter. <laughs> it just sounds like a B or like some stupid trumpet player. <laughs> right? It kind of sounds like a trumpet player. <laughs> I think this one needs more reverb is what that is. Where's my reverb? Here. And then it needs to be a lot quieter. You know what? I think they all need to be under the reverb. With the delay. I want this to be absolutely terrifying. Okay, I like the distortion, but I need to get rid of some of the high end. I think that lower octave is too dominant. Oh. I think I'm having way too much fun. <laughs> Why don't we bring back that jazz clip? D oh. Oops. Yeah, let's play that jazz clip again. Anyways, 
<laughs> I've been recording for a long time. I don't know how comprehensible this is. I hope you're entertained and I hope you all have a happy Halloween. I've been recording for way too long. I think I'm gonna go get some sleep. So I'll see you guys in the next video. Yeah, maybe I'll just take a short nap. Thank <laughs> you.